Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, my deadbeat parents abandoned me at age 14 and when I finally got my life back on track, they found me again and tried to exploit me. They insisted that I must give them my house and child. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the story. So I was all ready to just jump into this story with no context, forgetting that not everybody had horrible childhoods and will just understand the things I'm talking about. So I guess if you do, you can skip ahead a little, but I just want to give some background context about my parents. So I grew up with my parents being deadbeat parents from as far back as I can remember. If it wasn't for other family members and charities, I probably would have starved or something. Back then, CPS was not such a huge thing, so kids like me ended up going under the radar. In fact, I learned years later that the only reason they bothered keeping me was because they could get extra benefits. By the time I was 14, they had lost any care about me being in their life. I came home from school one day to find that they'd been evicted or left or something. All I knew was that I didn't know where they went. So then I stayed with my grandma and found out years later that they left her a note saying that they were leaving and not to let me go look for them. I had been abandoned by my own family. A few years later though my grandma died and I was just 17 years old and basically on my own. I had some bad years I would rather not talk about but by the time I was ending my 20s I was in a good place. I had actually regained some contact with my parents but I knew they were still just drunks that did not care about anybody but themselves. Hell, I don't know how they managed to keep themselves alive after all of these years. I married a nice girl and did not bother inviting them to the wedding because I knew that they would ruin it. I saw them infrequently enough that I didn't want to just move or have some big fight to make them stay away forever. I think part of me had this inner child hoping that one day they would show up with a new lease on life and want to apologize for everything they did. That day did not come though and I knew logically it was not ever gonna happen. When we had a son, I knew that I was never gonna make him have the kind of life that I did. I was gonna keep him safe and make sure he felt loved by us. When he was about 8 months old, my parents popped back in with no warning like usual. They never had a solid place where they were living and just seemed to show up sometimes. My wife tolerated them only because she knew that they would leave again for a long time. This time they found out that I had a son and did not have a reaction that was normal. My dad said, You did a pretty good job getting this house and having a kid. The thing is that we basically ruined our lives because of you and you didn't give us anything in return. Yeah, they were trying to blame me for being born as the reason that they were deadbeats. Mom, we could have been so much more, but you took our best years away and now we just have nothing. Me, don't play this game again with me. You always dance around the subject and I'm sick of telling you that I have no money for you. Dad, but you have this house and that little one. Mom, we've been looking into it and a baby can get big bucks from the government. Me, please tell me that you're not thinking what I think you're thinking about. Because if you are, I swear to God I might do something I will regret. Mom, we need a home and you can always try and earn another one. Plus we need to raise him or the government won't give us anything. I was enraged and had my wife take my son into another room because I did not want either of them hearing or seeing what was about to happen. I had a lifetime of neglect and abuse bottled up and what they said made it all start bubbling out. I grabbed my dad and shoved him against a wall hard before screaming that I would never give them my son. Me, you abandoned me when I was just a kid. Do you really think you can come and do it all over again? I swear to god that you're gonna leave this house right now and never come back again. If you try to talk to me or even touch my son, I promise that I will put both of you in the hospital, prison or even the morgue. They both tried to argue and even forced their way into the house, so I just screamed at my wife to call the cops on them. I was making sure they learned that after all of these years they were not gonna get away with hurting me any longer. I told the police that they were trespassing and that I didn't want them in my home or on my property. My worthless idiot of a father then raised his hand and slapped me saying that I must respect him because I'm walking around on this planet because of him and that he raised me. I wished I had pressed charges but this situation triggered a lot of memories of trauma for me so I guess that's why I didn't think about it in that moment. My mom insisted that they would try to kidnap my kid because a moron like me cannot be a good father. When they argued about being my parents and having rights I told the police that they lost any rights when I was 14 and they just left me. That they were a couple of homeless drunks that were coming in an attempt to steal my child to gain money. 
I knew that nothing they did would warrant an actual stay in prison, but enough for them to spend a night behind bars and know that I meant business. I went to the courts to get a restraining order claiming that I was being stalked and harassed by them. Also, that I feared that they would try and kidnap my son if they had access to him. So far they have not come back or violated the restraining order, it upsets me to no end that I will feel the need to probably always be on edge about them showing up out of the blue. It just never hit me of how bad everything they did was until I thought about them doing it with my son too. Trying to use a baby to get money that is meant to care for him but would just go to themselves. A way to continue to be deadbeat parents while forcing the government and other people to take pity on them. Nobody is gonna wanna turn somebody away if they have a baby, it is just pure manipulation and they are experts on this. Also the fact that they blamed me for their lives being messed up was the opposite of anything I wanted to hear. I'm sure that some kids that were not planned caused a lot of hardship in families. But I don't think those parents are gonna directly put blame and use it to try and guilt trip the kid almost 30 years later into giving them money or property or a baby. It's just messed up and made me realize that holding out for people to change is not the right thing to do and instead cutting them out is the solution. And now we have an update to the story and it was actually posted two years later. So hey Reddit, I thought I would just check in here. You might remember my post from two years ago where I got a restraining order against my deadbeat parents. Well, I am happy to say my parents tried to come back several times, thus violating their restraining order, and my dad ended up going to jail for some time because of this. Eventually though, my wife and me ended up moving to a different country, we sold our house and we just found out that my wife is pregnant again and we are about to have a second kid. I could not be any happier as for my deadbeat parents, well, let's just say that my dad succumbed to his alcohol addiction and my mom is not doing too well either. I almost feel sorry for them, but then I remember what they did to me and I'm just glad I could start over in a new place and have a new life. Merry Christmas. And yeah, ripe stars, let me know in the comments whether you enjoy these stories about insane parents and family drama, because I might do a few more of them if you like them. Also, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even leave another comment, because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much, and now let's continue with the petty revenge story. I was flying home from a work trip on AA. Now, on this flight, a man sitting next to me. He was not super tall, about average in height. He needed to go to the bathroom, so I got up, let him out, and got up again to let him in. However, as I sat back down, my leg hit his. I looked down to see his leg about halfway into my aisle, leaving me with about one third of the space that I had. I'm thinking he's gonna move and he's got plenty of space because he does not have a bag under his seat like me, but he keeps it there. I'm sitting side saddle in my seat at this point. I look at him, then at his leg and then back at him. He blatantly stares at me, then pulls out his phone and just starts playing on it. So what I do is lift my foot and place it over his foot, setting the dirty sole of my converse on what looks like new white Nikes, fabric ones too, not leather. He immediately whips his head up at me and I follow his example, pulled out my tablet and started reading. He pulls his foot away and had a nasty attitude the whole plane ride. But I got my space back. And yeah, ripe stars, I just hate entitled people on airplanes. That is just a worse situation to encounter a Karen. Anyway, the next one is a petty revenge story as well. My boyfriend saw this one through and I'm so glad he did. So this chick was hired into the management team with my boyfriend and has been a problem from the start. As soon as she was hired, she came in trying to change things and run the restaurant. Turned the employees against my boyfriend and started causing issues with the schedule demanding certain days off and screwing us over because now he has to work the worst days and she gets all the weekends off. She also talked crap about me for some reason because I apparently had too much cleavage. There was no reason whatsoever for my name be in her mouth like what the hell. Then we've been silently waiting for her to mess up. There was always little things like messing up the employee's schedule or getting complaints about her from customers. But she finally did something big enough to report. An employee was irritated with her and vented to my boyfriend about it. And they spilled all the tea about a night where she demanded money from the servers as a tip for her. She is a salaried manager, she does not need tips from employees and it's probably illegal too. She literally demanded $25 from each of them, then when they gave her that, she said that was not enough and asked for $50 each. 
The ones who did not give her the other $25 mysteriously got scheduled less the week after. Seriously messed up. Then my boyfriend heard from another manager and from the customers themselves of a huge wedding party that she was extremely unprofessional and difficult to work with. The guests complained about her four separate times. Edit, because I forgot about this, she is also married and would have work boyfriends and talked about how bad she wanted to screw one of the buzzers by name. She did this, like, in front of him. Strange behavior. Her other two work boyfriends got fired a while back when the owner caught them drinking at an outdoor bar down the street after they called in sick. So my boyfriend decided to first tell the kitchen manager, the highest under the owner, who then told him to immediately bring it to the owner's attention. The owner compiled a list of dates and employee names. She is getting fired as soon as she gets back from vacation this Wednesday. Update to the story, they fired her earlier this afternoon. They immediately removed her from their Facebook group, like after the other manager called my boyfriend to tell him they did it, I don't even think he knew my boyfriend was behind the whole thing, we immediately checked and she was already gone. Which made my boyfriend think that she probably didn't take it very well. But hey, all the other rejects are waiting tables down the street, so maybe she will go there. Doubtful anyone will hire her as a manager though, since she got fired for stealing six months into her first management job. The employee that brought the info to my boyfriend texted, is she gone? After an announcement about scheduled changes was posted to Facebook. Unfortunately, that's all I have right now. My boyfriend just went to work, so I'm gonna give it a few hours to see if there are any juicy details I can get first time I've ever seen him happy and be chipper going to work. Another update for funsies, she told her friend that she was fired for inappropriate tip distribution. Definitely tried to make it sound like she just made a mistake paying out a server one night instead of demanding a large amount of money from multiple servers for herself. And somehow a good amount of the employees are still sucking her tits saying they wish her the best. I guess a lot of them besides the one who were stolen from don't know what happened. And the next one is a pro-revenge story. So I started working in logistics at a company that builds things. That was just as the pandemic was starting actually. When I started we were 5 people in the team, but one of the guys quit soon after. This is important because it was a very good insight into how my department operates when they don't need or want a certain someone around. They will not outright fire you since they have to pay you a severance, but instead they will bully you into quitting. I saw pretty much the whole package. Excluding them from meetings and important events, putting them down in public, lecturing them, never noticing good work done, but always making sure that everyone knows about work that is poorly done. Drowning someone in work and then berating them when they inevitably cannot keep up. It was outright childish at times, I did not register it at the time, but it was a really valuable lesson for later. I was put in charge of managing our overseas suppliers, among other things. About half of our material came from overseas, most of that from China. While it seems like a big task for someone new, it was not done out of malice. Genuinely, everyone believed we were going to get a guy in China for the Chinese supplies and then I would be left for the handful of others. It seemed fair, but we never got that guy from China and I was left with all overseas suppliers. Another important thing is that just in this project the company had decided to change the workflow for overseas suppliers. This is because due to the pandemic the price of shipping containers had exploded. To explain it as simple as possible, previously the suppliers were responsible for filling our containers and bringing them to the harbor and we were responsible for picking them up from the harbor and bringing them to us. However, due to the demands and many other things, sometimes we just needed two or three pallets of parts where a dozen or more could fit inside a container. So we were shipping a lot of air, essentially. The new workflow would have the suppliers bring the parts to an external warehouse, one in the US, one in China, and then we would load them into containers to get the containers as full as possible and then bring them to the harbor and then into our plant. This way we needed to rent far fewer containers. This complicated things because it erased the direct contact from us to the suppliers and there was no official method how we were gonna keep in contact with suppliers, tell them how many parts we need, how to package them, if there were any changes requested, etc. During that time I was left mostly alone to deal with it and I set up a system with Excel. It was mostly manual, rather simple, but it worked well. It worked so well that one of the suits even chatted with me about it for a bit, since he wanted to make it a standard in future projects. And also, this is very important, I was the only person who actually knew all our overseas suppliers and their contacts. Some of you might be able to tell where this story is going already, so during that entire time nobody had actually bothered to ask me to explain to them 
how my system worked and where I kept track of all the supplier contacts. All of this data was hidden on like slide 800 of some Excel file I had saved in a folder titled Part Pictures, which was otherwise filled with pictures of parts. So now, moving forward, as the pandemic began dying down, the department for whatever reason decided they don't need me anymore, I have theories but nothing certain, so I will just leave it at that. I pretty much saw precisely the same thing go down as I had seen with that one guy who had left shortly after I started, all the bullying. I thought to myself at first that if I pull through and keep doing a good job, and I believe I did a good job, they would eventually cool down. However, they didn't. After two months of that, I said F it and decided to just sit out and endure until the Christmas bonus we get every year and then hand in my notice. And also, I just delayed teaching anyone how my system worked until I was gone. And that is pretty much how it happened. Off topic by the way for my future employment, I actually lucked out. One of the local suppliers I was managing had a really chill guy as managing director. I gave him a call, explained that I was about to be unemployed, asking if they needed staff. He then called me into an interview, we talked about anime for an hour, while his HR lady looked confused about what an Attack on Titan was and he told me I can come in the moment I am done with my then current job. Back on topic though, a month into working at my new job, I got a call from my old job, the department manager. To his credit, he was always a reasonable guy, he told me in plain words that they have no idea where the hell to even start with the Chinese suppliers, he then offered me my old job back with a very respectable pay increase. I explained that I already had a new job. Two days later I got another call where the same manager offered me many times my monthly salary just to come in for one week and instruct my old team in how my process functioned, introduce them to all the contacts etc and I told him I refused because of the way I'd been treated by them when I worked there. He said he understood and wished me luck at my new job and then hung up. The reason I'm writing this story now, this week I randomly got in touch with some of the people in the transport department from my old job. They mentioned that in the now 10 months since I left, the logistics department racked up 8 figure losses due to wrong deliveries, over and under deliveries, outdated parts, some suppliers even cancelling their contracts and new suppliers needing to be sourced etc. All the blame for that fell on my old team, my new job is fine, it's not the best job but I get to travel a lot and get nice bonuses for it. My boss is not around much since he married. I do sometimes regret not taking that offer for a week as an instructor. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. I recently bought a new house after spending years in a cramped apartment saving up so I could afford something nice right off the bat while still having some money left over for other expenses. I found the perfect place and the only downside was that the house needed quite a few renovations done. The garage for example was completely unfinished but the price to finish it up was pretty low, amazingly. I didn't want to move in until it was finished but I had taken some of my furniture over to the place along with some new pieces I bought specifically for this house. I also bought some food to keep in there in case I needed it after moving in. Plus it would cut down on the time it would take me to move in when all of the renovations were finally done. The few times I was over there I was greeted by different neighbors who wanted to welcome me to the neighborhood. One woman in particular named Sophie got my phone number and invited me to a neighborhood party she was throwing the next month. Another couple that I met, Karen and Steve, gave me a strange feeling. They were not hostile but I got the sense that they were not greeting me just to be friendly as they mostly asked questions about when I was moving in and who would be working on the house but I assumed they were just curious. The renovations were going to take a few more weeks but while that was happening my new neighbors had their own plans for the house. The majority of this story is from the information I pieced together from other people in the area as well as Karen and Steve themselves. They had seen that I was waiting to move in and they knew it was their chance to get access to the house. While the contractors were working, they came up and explained that they were extended family who wanted to get the place ready as a surprise to me. They were allowed to enter the house, don't worry, I reported the contractors for their stupidity and because the work was being done in the garage no one really noticed that my neighbors had lied. They also kept things a little quieter until the workers had gone home for the day. They started off by using the house to throw a couple of back to back parties where they proceeded to let people leave their trash all over the house and got food stains on the majority of surfaces. Apparently all of their friends are just as trashy as they are, they did not even bother cleaning up afterwards since it was not their house so it being dirty did not bug them. I was completely unaware of what they were doing and therefore powerless to stop them at the time. 
Apparently, they don't have enough storage in their own house as they started putting their old furniture, clothes and other random items in my house to keep it all safe. I think they wanted to get rid of everything out of their garage so they could use it for other purposes. Likely to party and instead of just donating some items, they used my property. However, instead of putting their garbage in cans on the lawn to be picked up, they started putting it in my house out of sheer idiocy and laziness. I also later learned that they have numerous dogs and cats that they barely care for, only giving them food on occasion and never taking them to the vet. They let the animals roam free in my home and never bothered to let them out, which meant the floor became covered in food and animal poop, which makes me sad to think about. The poor creatures were stuck in a messy empty house with no one to show them kindness. They did not stop there though, they parked on my lawn and driveway and completely destroyed the grass from repeatedly driving over it and leaving trash in my yard. It was at that point that Sophie, my kind neighbor, started to pay closer attention to everything that was going on. She had been chalking everything up to the construction and had even assumed that I was the one partying in there, but when she saw the cars she knew Steve and Karen were taking advantage of the empty house for their own gain. She texted me the basics and told me to come over to her place so we could decide what to do from there. I was furious when I saw what they had done to the outside of my house and that was only half of the damage. I didn't hesitate to call the police as it didn't feel safe to confront them on my own. After all, I had no idea what they were capable of or how they would react and I did not want to take a risk like that if I didn't have to. I also called a tow company to let them know that there were a few cars illegally parked on my lawn and I would need them towed as soon as possible, since I did not want to give them a chance to move their cars before getting caught. The officers arrived and talked with me about the situation and I explained how I had bought this house recently but had not yet moved in and my neighbors somehow got access to the place and decided to use it however they wanted. Karen and Steve were promptly asked to leave by the police and I got my first look at what they had done to my home. Their animals had ripped apart the majority of my newly bought furniture and there were beer cans and other garbage scattered all over the floor. It was a disaster and the smell was awful. Karen and Steve were adamant that I had given them permission and that I was lying to get them in trouble. Thankfully the officers believed me, I was asked if I wanted to press charges and I said yes, however I had an even better idea. I had discovered a way to get revenge on them that would be even better than just pressing charges. As I began cleaning up the house I noticed drug paraphernalia amongst the other garbage strewn around and a strong stench of weed in my house. I started formulating a plan on how I would catch them either buying, selling or doing illicit drugs in their home and get them in far greater trouble. I paid close attention to people going in and out of their house and was able to record evidence of them exchanging drugs for money on their own front lawn. I also knew they were doing drugs in their garage and stored their supply in there as well which is likely why they wanted to use my house as storage. One evening they were getting high in the garage and left the door open, seemingly unaware of the mistake or possibly assuming no one in the neighborhood would notice. But I saw the opportunity and called the police once again to tell them that Karen and Steve were engaging in illegal activities out of their home. When the cops arrived the garage door was still open and they quickly moved to detain my trashy neighbors and collected evidence of their activities. Obviously I'll take these entitled douchebags to court to replace everything they had damaged while squatting in my space, but it also felt great to see them receive already a small bit of punishment for their actions. It's highly likely that they will lose the house and they've already lost custody of their pets. Most of them were sent to various animal rescues but I ended up taking in one of the dogs and have nursed her back to health. Messing with me was the worst decision they could have made. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.